What is up, everyone? Happy Tuesday in the house. We got a great episode for you today. Um, but first, let me just start by saying this episode of the podcast is brought to you by our loyal sponsors. First up, we got Mr. JWN Construction. Uh, I'm sorry, JWN Sons Construction, and they specialize in you know deck work, porch work. Um, door repair, window repair, fence installs, any kind of, any, any really construction needs that you might have, give them a call, you know, give, call up John, you can reach them at 401-487-4134, uh, get yourself a quote, you know, they'll take care of you, hey, what can I say, man, it's construction, fuck, you know what you need, give them a call, check them out, JW and Sons Construction, also, big thanks to Onlyville Tire, Onlyville Tire Shops in Providence, They've been in business now for almost 100 years, which is fucking insane. So they got new tires, they got used tires. Just go see Dory, she'll take care of you. That 86 Plainfield Street in Providence. Or you can give them a call on the telefono at 401-421-1800. Let her know that the J2 podcast sent you over there. She'll hook you up with some cool gadgets. Um, and even if you don't need new tires, you know, get them balanced, get them rotated, all the good shit. Another big thanks is going to go out to Division Street Auto, which is located at 595 Division Street in Pawtucket. Um, they've been with us since day one. I'll never take my car anywhere else to get serviced, repaired, whatever the case is. Call Division Street Auto at 401-723-7080. Quit fucking around and wasting your time with these, uh, you know, mechanics that you don't trust, you're not sure if they're treating you right. At Division Street, man, they got integrity. Every time I walk in there, I feel like I got honest service. Love it. Won't go anywhere else. <clears throat> Excuse me, guys. A little early in the day for me. Also, big thanks to Tops Electric Supply at 120 Point Street in Providence. Tops Electric is your one-stop shop for anything electrical you might need, whether it's a uh, conduit, some wire... But they really specialize in, in lighting, so whether it's LED, old school for old school fluorescent, can't talk. Um, they got you covered, you know, indoor, outdoor, exterior, uh, landscape lighting, all the good shit, man. And if you can't make it out there, give them a call. They'll actually come out and do a house call to get you a quote, you know, field visit, whatever you need. 401-861-0695 is how you can give them a call and a big thank you for donkey dodgers poker donkey dodgers poker is just a really great social way to to learn the game or even if you're a seasoned vet you know you just want to play some poker it's good it's fun people they're at bars every night so for 20 to 25 bucks you'll actually get a buffet Um, so you get dinner you don't feel like cooking you can just go out eat dinner and you get entered into a free poker tournament that has a cash prize um, you can catch them on Facebook, Facebook at Donkey Dodgers Poker. And every night, they're at at least one venue, so at least one game a day. And it's, like I said, you know, if you're new to the game, it's fantastic. They're great people. If you're, you know, old to the game, you know, it's a good, good fun way to play poker without driving all the way to a casino. And last but not least, we'd like to give a big, big thank you to our newest sponsor, Ant the Barber. Ant works out of Atomic Salon. He's been cutting hair for, who knows, man, a bajillion years. I think it's 14 years, actually. Uh, He's been my exclusive barber for the past six, seven years, maybe. That's why every time you see me, I look like a fucking million bucks. Crisp haircut. He's fantastic, though. He's professional. Uh, I can't think of anything, any experience with him where I was unsatisfied with my haircut or is it unsatisfied or dissatisfied? Whatever the case is, man, I'm happy with how I look. Uh, whatever you need, designs, straight cuts, scissor cuts, um, the straight edge, he's just he's the best, man. Give him a call at 401-580-6651. Again, that's my man, Anthony Cambio, Anthony Barber. And they're located at 1478 Atwood Avenue, Johnston. Other than that, guys, we've got a real fun episode for you today. we got Bill Bartholomew of Bartholomew Town Podcast coming on just to talk a little shit with us, man, and uh, kind of educate us. He, he does a lot of does a lot of local politics on his show, some community influence. So he's going to educate Jay and I on, on what's going on and hopefully give us some good insight. Uh, we had a lot of fun. You know, we got obviously the booze is flowing and we hope you enjoy
Thanks. Time to talk some shit with the J Squared Podcast. Here we go. <laughs> All right, so what's up, everybody? Bill, thanks for coming on. Yeah, my pleasure. What's up? We'll get through these, uh, I don't know, these uniformity. Why are we saying hi to people? It's not live. I don't know why I even do that. Well, it's, it's a relationship with the audience, right? You know, you oh, built shit. it up over Very time. True. It's yes. like... It's an old friend saying, you, it's like Mr. Rogers coming in again. You're acknowledging. Yeah. We got the peeps. The two-way street. You okay. asked earlier why I chose, po- like on the radio show, yeah. uh, why we chose podcasting versus, you know, traditional talk radio. And I wanted to say that and I forgot, dude. I was a little nervous. We were live. So I'm just like, oh shit, <laughs> rattling shit off. But when I listened to, to Rogan, after so many times, man, I felt like I knew him and I felt like I knew the guests. So, like, I would literally, like, it sounds corny, but I'd literally be like, oh, that, that's such a whatever thing to say. Like, that's him, you know? Like, so I, I appreciate that. When you're listening to these, you almost feel like you're involved in them. You know, like, you're a part of them and you're hanging Absolutely. out with us. So that's pretty cool. Yeah, that's, I mean, that's <clears throat> the broadcasting tradition that I'm drawn to. You know, the relationship that's super specific. You know, that it's like a, it's a, there's nothing else like that, you know, where especially when it's audio only with radio and with podcasting where it's like that voice, that connection. Mm. I mean, it's it's a relationship and it's legitimate. It's intimate. It is right? intimate. I, to I, I have to say, it I think intimate. it's as legitimate as any feeling you get from a, a human to human or human to anything else encounter. Um, to me, anyway, I, I value the, the, that relationship no, a lot. Agreed 100 percent. You know, I'm, yeah. I'm glad that. You just said that now because it reminded me that I fucking forgot earlier. <laughs> um, but anywho, so uh, guys, we have Bill Bartholomew on today. What's I, up, Bill? It's happening. Yeah, so he um, he runs a podcast among many other things called uh, the Bartholomew Town. Am I pronouncing that right? That's Bartholomew it, yep. Town podcast. Pretty clever name. Um, so he's kind enough to come chill with us today, man. Talk shit. Um, I reached out to him. Just put it. He must be pretty easy to find. All I do is Google Rhode Island podcast, and you were right there at the top. So. That's legit. And, That's uh, awesome. You want to just real quick uh, tell us about the podcast, what, when you started it, what's what's the deal with it? Yeah, I, I launched it last year, March 2008, so it's like we're actually going to be at episode 100 uh, next week. Damn. Uh, it comes whoop, whoop. out. Look out. <laughs> um, every Tuesday and Friday, it's on Apple Podcasts and all the usual spots, BartholomewTown.com or RIPodcast.com. And basically, I started it. I was tr- probably more motivated by the idea of trying to put together kind of a reel or something to get a job as a producer at a radio station or just something like that. Uh-huh. Yeah. That was really my initial thought. It was like a that portfolio of your, you know, your bypass going to yeah. broadcasting school, utilize information that I got from being a musician and knowing how to, to work a board and knowing how that side of the, 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 the gig, um, just kind of giving myself a platform, you know, and very quickly it kind of shifted more and more to be, wow, I just want to do this. I want to, I want to yeah. stay in charge of the production side of it. Right. Who's coming on? What the 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 uh, the type of interview we're going to do? You know, being a storytelling interview versus not a gutcha inter- question right. interview. That's that type of stuff. So. That's where it's at now. I interview or, or converse, I should say, mostly with politicians in Rhode Island or, or people in the media. Although, was that original, the original plan or did that happen and you say, hey, like this? It kind of was the original plan. I, I've always loved broadcasting. I'm a musician, I guess by trade, you would say. So Let my, me interrupt for a second. You yeah. said a mu- musician. What, yeah. what, what do you, guitar, lead singer? Yeah, uh, but well, each of them. I, so I started out as a drummer when I was nice. in like middle school. That was my first switch. Like, a sexy position in a band, right? It's sexy, yeah. Like, if and you're ever going to be like, damn, I want to be something. It's drummer, man. I think Tommy Lee. These guys get all the chicks. All right. All right. Yeah. <laughs> continue, continue. Yeah. And then fast forward, here I am today. But, uh, <clears throat> yeah, you know. That's, you fat guys. <laughs> that's where my music career went. It, pretty much. I mean, you're looking at the venue we're in today. Here we are. Um, but in all seriousness, I, I, I started on drums. And then in high school, I, start, I picked up guitar and started writing songs. And I was in a band in high school that we ended up staying together for six years. What kind of music? Like, uh, 
grunge alternative. That's what I sort of yeah, sort of that. Yeah, I guess Chris, so. Christian erotica. Yeah, totally. Christian erotica is is <laughs> probably the best description I can think of. Nice. Um, yeah, it's it's original for sure. The 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 songwriting that I've tapped into. I really think of songwriting as almost like you're a lightning rod, and the songs are kind of almost out there. Not to get too esoterical right out of the gate here, right, right, right. but you're almost, it's sort of like a painter. It's like, where does that come from? It must come from somewhere. Maybe it's the Big Bang. And it leaves an leaves interpretation open. Kinda. Yeah, and that's kind of how I've always approached songwriting. Yeah. Um, when I try to say, great, this type of music is is doing well right now in a, in a commercial sense, let me write something in that area. I always fail so miserably, and there's so many examples of music I've put out that's so like, like eh. why, did, why like, weren't you doing it feels you? Like you're forcing it. You oh, hundred percent. And the and in music, once you've established yourself at any level, the audience immediately knows when you're when you're pulling something like that, yeah. pulling a stunt. So let me ask you a question. You know. So out, outside of obvious, the obvious uh, in. Indicators that let's say you're not doing so well as a musician. Yeah, Calm what down, bro? <laughs> well, I'm asking because he's saying. Oh, uh, now you made me forget my question. <laughs> Damn, I had something really good. Like, oh, how do you know that you're not doing is, you know, as well as that you want to outside of obvious? Like, you know, people aren't booing you, right? Not right, right. Exactly well, sometimes I guess, but. You just, yeah, you just, just satisfied happened? or not? Um, I don't think I've. I actually have never experienced that. Luckily, you know, to my that I can recall. Yeah. Um, you know, but you know, I think I think you just know if if the music you're making feels like something that when someone walked up to you and said, "Let me hear your music," would you want to play them the latest thing you've done, or would you go back in your catalog? So you're, so you're very self aware then. You're very, you know. And it gets yeah. more challenging as time goes on. Now I'm in a band called Silver Teeth. We've been together for geez, now it's like five years. Started it in Brooklyn and moved moved it back to Rhode Island. And that band wow. is is really interesting. I, I split songwriting duties with a bass player, and uh, who's also my wife. Really? <laughs> yeah, nice. And uh, or a trio. And that's a different take than most of my career up until that point where I, I was maybe not the only driving force in the band. I had unbelievably talented and, and great minds around me and working parallel uh, to I what envy, I was doing. I envy but, that. But, but this is the first band I've been in where it's hey, like a band me. band. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> I wish I could say the same, man. Totally. No, I'm kidding. Well, that's where I'm at now. I'm in this, this, this band, Silver Teeth, and uh, you know we're doing our thing. And, and, cool. And, and, that's sort of my background in music, I guess. In a That's nutshell. what you. So that taught you working soundboards, shit like that. Yeah, yeah. Through as a musician, I lived in New York for ten years, and you know, I've I've always my dad bought me a PA system when I was in like middle school. Well, when I was in high school, um, and I paid it off by I paid it back by DJing the middle school dances where I went to school. So I kind of learned. Baller, though. I mean, you got to be. Yeah. That's pretty cool. Yeah, right. well, yeah, it was a good gig. Right. I mean, I feel like that's a pretty cool thing to do. Like. When you're in school, yeah. So by the time I was DJ. 15, I had totally 100 percent understanding of how to operate a, oh, a, a soundboard, set up a, a stage, all that business. Jeez, and that 15, I was like still wondering why, like, there's fucking hair going on. Oh, yeah, I had no other <laughs> skill sets, nor, <laughs> yeah, and I basically don't at bowls, this point yeah. either. But yeah, it's <laughs> it's uh, you know so that was a huge advantage, obviously. So when it was time for me to start a podcast, like I I have I do it by myself, I engineer, I do everything, I book, I you know so that that's great. That that's all great. comes from my experience as an, mm -hmm. as a musician, and 100 uh, percent gave me a, a huge advantage in in that regard when i when i started to do uh podcasting you know yeah 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 because we kind of like still don't know what we're doing man and this we, is great i mean you guys just, are more no. professional than <laughs> I, what i've got we're in a hey, loft of, you know yeah we we just try mics. to get a little better you know every every episode we started with two different mics it was just him and i we didn't have a george and then we're like hey man like this is stupid. It's harder to keep the <laughs> sounds right. It looks weird. Like, we just look like idiots. My mic is on this thing. He's got a little regular mic on a stand. Yeah. You know, we're like, yo, it's probably going to sound more consistent if we just have the same equipment. So then we had two mics and a different third one, but we're, we're working our way there. We brought George on. But I, I do feel like we're, you know, we're learning so much every yeah, single as episode along. as we go. Oh, yeah. it's and, and podcasting and all this type of stuff, it's like, it's so new. <clears throat> you know, there's obviously the sound of... A major podcast production that mm. comes from something like an NPR or a Gimlet or whatever, right. and you you can get pretty close to that, I think. But it's just like music. One thing I learned in music is that 
you know, I've recorded at Sony Studios, or not at Sony Studios, I've recorded, to be honest, I've recorded uh, w- with the Sony producers in one of the physical studios in a different building, you know, after Sony closed yeah, down. So I've re- recorded on that level of facility. We've been recently in Kaleidoscope Sound with Silver Teeth. I mean, a big time studio, you know. And you immediately go, okay, I got you. No matter how much hmm. money I spend at Guitar Center, no matter how many tutorials Guitar I watch, Center. you're not going <laughs> to get that sound. You're, like, you're not going to get that there are quality. Levels to this shit, like. There's no reason to chase that. <laughs> but however, within the indie spectrum, there's a you know a totally different spectrum. There's a level of quality that you can get from when going you say to indie yard sales. You're yeah. about the genre of music, independent podcasts, independent YouTube oh, videos, okay. independent music. Hip hop, rock, wow. whatever it is, is there's a spectrum. Is? I'm, 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 Dude, I was yeah. just gonna ask the same question. I'm like, I always hear indie, indie films this. and indie music. I'm like, yeah. I'm just what does that mean? I'm not but to me indie. that that means independent. yeah, independent of. I'm so ignorant, dude. I thought it was like money. Hollywood. <laughs> And, you know, like, and and power that comes with major about, stuff. Like, <laughs> Jeez, Jesus, bro. I thought I was rough when I said I thought it was like Bollywood. Holy kind of Moses! Like, no, I just yeah, I thought indie. I'm not. I, I don't mean to sound ignorant, but I was. I'm glad you asked. What does indie mean? But it stands for independent, not oh. Indian. Yeah. Well, you know, I think that's that's the uh, you know you the gist of it is that it's just un un uh, unattached to to like corporations, which that, is why that, it's not marketed as hard as. You know, like a lot of shit. Yeah, sometimes it has the budget, but usually just doesn't I have the budget. Of the, and that creates right. a quality that is beautiful. You know, the best indie films aren't trying to be, mm. you know, use the special effects that are in, music. you know, best yeah, indie music. That's fucking right. good shit right there, yeah. man. Especially Absolutely. when you're at home talking a little. Like, it's, mm. it's where you, it's that authenticity. I think that's a specific audience. It's always been there in different mediums or whatever. Um, and, and now in podcasting, that's. Also relevant, I think that you so have we're, that sound. We'd be, we're indie. This is an indie um, podcast. Unless like Cumulus yes. Media bought you right before this began, then yeah, <laughs> or whatever. I'll tell you what, if Cumulus Media wants to pay, we might sell it. <laughs> Just start a new one. <laughs> now nah, that that's something that I, obviously making money, you know, doing anything that you enjoy is great. But I can't imagine getting to a point where. Somebody wants to pull the strings and say, "Hey guys, we really don't want you to talk about that." I'm just gonna be like, "No, nah, fuck, fuck you, dude." Like, that takes away everything at that point. You know, now we Absolutely. just have, now we just have a job. Ultimately. Right. We're now we're just listening to somebody else above us and yeah. telling us what we can and can't do. Fuck. Yeah, there's that's like you know, and that goes for anything. You know, the, you get more people involved, the more people have power and control in in a project, mm. they can sabotage that project potentially. You know, and it could be yours from the, from the beginning. I mean, how many startups end up with the guy who created it ousted for one reason or another? That's right. You know, yeah, it's it's dangerous. At the same time, there's benefits to working with them, like major. Media outlets as well. You know, you can get. You must look at your podcast and and what you've created. You must look at it like like it's kind of like your own art. Oh, it's an it's my art. Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. That's pretty (laughs) cool. I look at it as yeah. That's that's for sure. It's like songwriting. It's uh, it's like my drawing. Whatever. It's a it's fundamentally an art project. Yeah, it's not. I've I've had um. Yeah, I draw these monsters. I call them monstros. They're like these crazy characters. We use them in our band a lot. Use them in the podcast a little bit. Nice. And uh, I've had a couple of shows. Were they just characters, they're or characters yeah. that come out find of nowhere. Any on the website or on my Instagram, Bill Bartholomew at Bill Bartholomew. Yeah, I put I them up see. there. Um, but yeah, I call them monstros. I've, I did a couple of shows in one in uh, Brooklyn and one in Newport recently. Very minor. My wife is the visual artist in our household. I mean, you guys are very so. involved in like each other's, I guess, hobbies and talents or whatever. Well, you know or, what, what we're realizing yeah. too is. I'm noticing a trend that everybody we have on the show is so much more talented than us. <laughs> That's so true. Come on. So much, we're like, what are you good at? Like, well, maybe making people laugh and not. I, I eat. That's stuff the most before. difficult talent, though. <laughs> making people laugh. That's kind of fucking making hard, laugh. man. But then we had comedians on last time, and they're telling us about, you know, uh, Chuck and Brad. Yeah. You know, they're telling us about their shit. And What's up, like, Chuck and Brad? Well, they're really making people laugh. Like, we're laughing at each other, and some people are just yeah, that's like, right. all right, whatever. Yeah, whatever, though. I mean, I think if, if, if you guys are laughing, I think, I think you make people laugh. And I think that's the main mm. objective of, uh, you know, at the end of the day, it should be kind of the objective. You know, whether, whether it's a laugh, like hysterics, or it's like just laughing at or- how... F- 
how fucking amazing life is. You yeah, know? right. Exactly. <laughs> you know, like, we made it this fucking far. The small stuff. You know, you know whatever it is, I think that's where, you know, the value of what you guys are bringing to the table comes yeah, in. True, you know? true. Come on. Thanks, man. Much appreciated. Yeah. All right. So that's uh, that's the Bartholomew Town. That's where we mm-hmm. all started. That's dope. And uh, earlier you were saying that you actually converted what some home space into a studio. Yeah. So we have that's it's this awesome loft space. It's an artist loft space in Elmwood in Providence. And uh, Is it like so, one of the old like converted mills. That yeah. It's barely loft? converted. It's which makes it all that more beautiful and reminiscent of what what I lived in in Brooklyn. Um, and we have. A, like enough space where we can do show we do live shows there once a month and we have I have my podcast studio there and we live there and my wife has her art studio and it's just so, this great like almost out of the past at this point type of space it's humongous and that's where the podcast is conducted so it plays a part you atmospherically never get bored going going there going home like every, every time you go home you're like wow, I just well, love this place yeah i'm there all the time and that's the only challenge is you know you get into those habits where we're like wow i only sit in this chair looking out the window in this spot you know i have all this space oh, what if, uh, yeah. and then you mix yeah. it up and you go to the other side and you just look out the window nice. like or just whatever cause, just because just because why the hell not yeah. and and that's fascinating you know uh, being in a big space like this but yeah no it's amazing it, it causes a it's the only way i can work the way i do i mean i, I work a lot you know um maybe way too much not not in the sense oh you're burning yourself out but i question how if if i get off on your podcast and your podcast and 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 the podcast comes out twice a week right then so the creating those booking those or whatever and then conducting them and all that but then i also do uh print extrapolations for motif i do radio extrapolations for um 101.1 fm um, I do a, the, a radio show on talented. WBOB. Yeah, <laughs> <laughs> what the fuck? But I do all this stuff around it. And, uh, you know, so it takes a ton of time to, like, actually execute and then releasing yeah. on social media. So there's a lot that goes yeah, into the episodes. Like marketing on social media. Yeah, um, yeah, which, I mean, that's something that um, luckily the pod has gained steam without me spending a lot of time or money um, or any money really at all, but certainly time even on social media. Put, yeah, we're, we're going still for doing it. a lot of, you know, just promoting it as much as we can. You know, it doesn't yeah. have all that traction yet, so it's... But as far well, as, like, getting the big I mean, campaigns, it's you great. Know? I mean, he, he kind of picked, you know, uh, uh, I, don't, I don't know how to say this right. I'm not, maybe I won't articulate it properly. Uh, not a safe... Topic, Damn. but I mean, I'm he saying, you're like safe, politics. Bro. I mean, like, he say you're not. Right. He say you're non. I'm, tr- I'm not trying to make it sound like that. Um, but I mean, that's a gr- that's actually a great, almost kind of genius thing to because everybody is involved in politics and has a kind of a say or a stance or a something, whatever. And so I mean, it's it's great conversation. It's great, you know. Well, what's content. nice about podcasts too, and this, there's just so many people. You know what I mean? Like, the chances are there are going to be some people that just enjoy your show. You know, like whatever yeah. it's about. There's how many? I don't even know how many people listen to podcasts. Hundreds of millions, though. You know, sixty they're... million is the last number I saw. Really? It's yeah. Be more than and that. growing. Maybe that's just in Providence. Sixty million. Maybe that's just in right. <laughs> right. George yeah. can probably confirm. I think it's. You know, I think the thing that, that was an advantage people. for me was that I had it was an election year, right? And uh, there's we we had be, before we started recording the pod here that we were talking about. WPRO, which is really how I got my start in, in this in the modern era here, is I called hmm. into WPRO and still do pretty regularly, but I call them all the time under the name William in Newport. And my first call why, ever... Why, why William in Newport? <laughs> well, at the time I lived in Newport, it was 2016. Oh. It was actually my first name call. William. Yeah, my, my property name was... Jay? Why are you what, so confused? It was before I, had, before I had the podcast. Newport, is just, it's kind of... It was almost like, well, it was like it, trying it, to it, hide it. yourself. No, no it's, well, it's absolutely. It gives you some fucking you class because most people that like are don't live on that side of the bridge, you hear Newport and the, um, the perception is like, oh, Newport, mansion. Absolutely. Beaches. You're rich. Absolutely. You're high class. Like, what you say. <laughs> Definitely not in that sense. Oh, but. <laughs> with, you know, the, the fucking Jones from Newport. True. You know, it just has a weird... I, I totally agree. <laughs> Jones from Central <laughs> Falls. See and how we, it sounds a little different? A little we, bit. We could go on a whole tangent about Newport, but, the, but, 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 you know, with this persona, William in Newport, you know, I would listen to WPRO and I would hear John DePietro, you know, this is right. 2016, and I thought to myself, wow... You know, first of all, what a talent, you know, uh, what a 
what a master of the mic. You know, this guy's a fucking awesome radio host. Yeah, but then yeah, I think yeah. how maddeningly outrageous some of his commentary was and how, how just just outside of what I would consider to be the spectrum of, of um, honorable debate. Yeah. So I said, well, why don't, why don't I call up? And, and there were a few times where I was actually successfully able to walk him back for at least a moment on some of his rhetoric. Stay, oh, okay. And I felt, you know, anti-immigration rhetoric, which was, you know, you know, that you would you would pound on people who who had food stamps and things of this sort. And so I started to push back on it, and uh, through this kind of disguised William in Newport, I was like, wow, you know, I I I I'd love to come out as myself, not necessarily pushing back on specific topics, but just going in depth on who the people are that are making these. So this would be decisions. live. You're, you're calling in and kind right. of debating, and they're airing. Each other, you know, both your each other's side. Yeah, that's right. I mean, talk talk How radio long would is like it last roughly like. Well, it depends on the host. Is I mean, Petro was pretty good. He would let me stay on for a minute or so. Sometimes when I call um, now, if if I've got a good mo- good role going, they'll let me stay on for a couple of minutes. That's pretty and cool. And yeah. sometimes it's a, a the host will totally disagree. I mean, talk radio is like open mic for whether you're a podcast host or whatever. I called WEI last night. You know, Alex yeah. Reamer. Um, same persona, William and Newport. I use that as a platform to just re- just work things out. But the thing is now, at this point, yeah. when I call WPRO's William and Newport, I'll hear from people, my listeners and right. others, wow, good call, or wow, you know, whatever, what, you know, Matt Allen, whatever, is, what a maniac he is, or whatever. I'll hear <laughs> that on Twitter. So now it's, the cat's a little bit out of the bag for me where I can't yeah. quite disguise right. it. But <laughs> but that's how I got started hey, in Rhode Island politics. Yeah, exactly. Yeah. Here's uh, <clears throat> uh, Christopher in uh, <laughs> Chapachin on uh, right, WPRO yeah, yeah. here. What's, what's up, Christopher? But My name uh, is Josh Polardi out of Johnston. <laughs> <laughs> I like it. That's pretty uh, cool. What's that? Six million is weekly. That's in the United States is somebody listens to a podcast, sixty million, and then that have listened to it in the last year is one hundred forty four million. Wow, that's crazy how much you know it's growing. It's just oh, it's probably going to continue. And all it is is kind of a innovation on you know talk radio. radio. Talk yeah, radio. I mean it's not. You know what it is. I think again the 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 whole on demand feature is it's just where everything is going. Streaming it when you want it on your time. You know, yeah, there's no of, commitments to yeah, podcasts. Think you of can start it and stop it later. I, I look at talk, you know, like radio and talk radio, pretty similar to how I look at cable, you know, for television and, and that medium. It's antiquated. It might still, yeah, it, it's going though. You know, more people are canceling cable and subscribing to like Netflix and Hulu and that. You yeah. don't even know anybody that has cable anymore. You have yeah. cable. It's shifting. You know, I saw an interesting stat last night. I don't remember the numbers, but WWE Monday Night Raw, you know, right. has like <clears throat> I don't know. I'm going to throw it out there. It's a fifth of the audience, basically, you know, that it did uh, 10 years ago. Right. You know, but the value of their advertising is like at least double. Yeah, it's it's gone up because of that narrow casting aspect. Now, wrestling or or raw or whatever, they got uh, the advantage of being live. I think live local radio like WPRO, but maybe maybe a refined version thereof that incorporates a little bit more of a digital three-dimensional or multi-dimensional edge. But traditional radio, especially for music, I think that's in trouble. Um, there still is yeah. something magical when you listen to a, a like a, a non-commercial radio station. And you hear a song, you're like, "Wow, I would never have in a million years ever pulled this out of that's Spotify." Right. My no ro- no app would have ever suggested it. this to me. It's brand new to me, and I'm I'm only getting this curation through this experience. I think there's a value to that, but generally speaking, I think radio is going to have to adapt. Um, but it, but the live Absolutely. aspect of it. There is, there's no, that's one thing that podcasts don't have and haven't necessarily, I think there's a social media angle that'll still yeah. be yet to come from a live perspective, but people haven't turned there yet. Right. There's, there's still something about watching a live NFL game or a live political debate or tuning into a live radio station. I, I think know? it's that you, the audience can relate to what they're actually seeing or the product that they're, they're, they're showing you because it's live. You, there is no chance to kind of, let's say, edit as much as you want and, right. and, and doctor the the footage or, or anything like that. So, yeah, I, I absolutely 100% agree with you about live footage being very, very, like, just appealing. Yeah, compelling. <clears throat> so. Yep. Hmm. Do you do, uh, have you ever done any live podcasts? Or? Yeah. Yep. I've got one coming up. Um, we're doing it 
at PVD Fest June eighth. We're gonna do one. I saw that actually. So that's gonna be. Yeah, yeah, I've I've done it live on election night. We did some stuff live on uh, from the Democratic headquarters up at the Biltmore. I think I think there's something there. You know, I, I still think the crispness of a professional radio station is superior to a live podcast. There's just so I don't know why that is, but I think there's something about it. Even if if the mm. space, the kind of like the way we're speaking now, with you know, I think that that is more appealing in a digital sense than broadcasting to the airwaves. I don't know why, or coming in a live sense. Hmm. Um, I don't know why, because it's almost like, well, these guys decided to print it and post it, so this space must be intentional, or this, you know, this kind of rambling yeah. portion, it must be relevant. They decided not to edit it, you know, whereas if it's live, you may be like, all right, all right they're lost, let's go, flip. That's right, right. And, it, and, oh, and that's you know, something I that, that, way. that, that yeah. the podcast have the advantage of. You know, you, you feel like this thing's been curated, there's, you know, you're not going to hear something that's unintended by the by the creator you know whereas radio or live anything it's got that mm. that element as a live music right. live music performer which is my favorite thing to do is do stuff live um, but at the same time you know the podcast format I'm not sure it's best equipped for live you know mm. I think it's better as a an on-demand platform you know Hmm. So, I don't know. I don't know how I'm talking about though. So no, no. <laughs> I mean, I, hey, man, it's, it's it's one of those things. It's not really a wrong or right answer because, like I said earlier, you know, I'm a big Joe Rogan fan, and yeah. I, I listen to his whenever I can, whenever I have the time. But it's always on demand, even though I know he does a live stream of it as he's doing it. Um, I've never cared to just be like, all right, I want to sit down and watch this. Speaking, right. you know, speaking of it, Joe Rogan, it could be a time commitment kind of thing too, where. You know, hey, I'm not going to dedicate. If I know their podcasts usually run an hour and a half and I listen to them in increments, I'm not even going to start watching this live one because I know that I'm not going to finish it. And I don't know. Which way does Joe lean? Uh, I mean, he claims that he's independent, you know, and he claims that he's left leaning independent. You know, it's, it seems like that. He's not really mutually exclusive. I, I think he's he probably relates to more people in the country because he doesn't really pick too much of one side. Right, you know, I, I can only classify him, dude, as, and I don't want to sound harsh, but he just seems normal. You know, like he, he's—he seems like he. Re, I can relate to the way he feels about certain issues, most issues, because they seem almost like common sense. You know what I mean? Like I'm—I wouldn't consider myself but dude, left. Pick, pick, pick something. I, like, I, just, to to give know. some examples, I wouldn't consider myself left-leaning, but I think that if you're gay, you should have equal rights. I think oh, yeah. that if you're, you know, from Peru or Ecuador or anywhere near the equator, you know, I don't look at myself as I'm any better than you because I was born on this patch of dirt. You know, it, it is what it is. I, I, listen, man, if you want to fucking feel like a woman, by all means, feel like a woman. Should I tween the shit out of it? It's not my business. But now I don't think that you should, you know, fuck around and take everybody's gun. I think everybody should have the right to protect themselves. So there are some... Things that I agree with on the right, some on the left, to me, they just seem like common sense. Yeah, I think that's most yeah. people, too. I, that's I, what I'm saying. I mean, that's at this point, I can't... Like, eh. when, when I hear What's people... the media that pushes, like, yes. extremes? Yeah, and I, I just can't understand. When I hear someone say, you know, uh, on religious grounds or whatever it is, I, I just can't understand how you could have any kind of anti-person rhetoric, when it's whether it's anti-homosexual yeah. rhetoric... Uh, trans, uh, whatever, maybe I, I just well, I, I can't like wrap my head. You can kind of be like, "Yo, fuck that group." Well, like, pa- sure, pa- anti. Yeah, I mean, uh, like, if, if, if I mean to me, that's but any criminal, like, you can have, you know, any not any, any criminal. criminal any, what about dudes any, that just smoke weed and went to jail? That's true. So maybe know? not them. That's fair. I hate, but, I just I always pick uh, pick apart words like criminal and all yep. the law because those fucking words don't well, mean anything. Because the stigma attached to them. Well, just yeah. the law and I, criminal I, that doesn't equate to like more like morality. You know, being a good person. Right. Right, I agree with you. but I mean, you know, I I don't see pedophile and and transgender or gay or anything in the same yeah, category any more than I'd see, uh, you know, the PTA meeting down the street. You could have a pedophile there, and likely do. Um, you know, the Boy Scouts really. There's any Jeez, situation, uh, you, you know, it's not because they're not or diminished by that's... by anything like that. And so to me, that's why I I look at those issues. I'm like, wow, how do, if if we're gonna move forward, I can't imagine how. And I know there are many people who have – who support you know, that way of thinking still. And that, that goes deeper than mm. the Make America Great Again thing. That goes deeper than any division. That's like a – wow, I, you know, I, I really have a lot of hate in my soul. That's the only explanation I can, I can yeah. feel for it. It's not 
No, no one will ever I'm sell sorry, me that can, religious. Can you, like, if you come to me and say, "Look, I'm, I'm, my religious beliefs make it so that, or whatever f- view I have of the world, make yeah, it so I can't that support I support gay people, whatever. right? I can't support gay people, or whatever. We are so far past that. You can have, you can have that really belief for within yourself, but to put that upon the world, I don't mm. see that as a political issue at all. No matter how Republican you are, I can't imagine that anyone deep down feels that way. Now they do. Uh, to me, I'm unfortunately, when but, you say feels that way, feel. Can you can you feel what way that somehow someone is if someone's gay right they're they are uh, wrong in some in any way for that or if so, so if someone's is is a transgender person uh, at in any stage or or or, or a um, you know someone who has is totally gender neutral you know whatever whatever that person is whatever you know to judge that person based on that to me is it's not a, that's not a political issue that's not saying well I'm conservative on religious grounds so you think therefore that's like actually a personal issue like, oh that's a, that's a deep down something just that maybe that person doesn't understand or just, like you said or it's hate based the or, only only explanation for me you know what yeah. I mean? so that's you know that that conversation is almost like separate from politics now. At this point, at this point, to me, I feel like you're right. It, is almost it should have be. To, it's, it should, it's, it's it should not political be, you know, at all. Right, and and people try yeah, to make it that. Nobody like, is you know nobody fucking goes through whatever uh, life they go through and decides or doesn't decide. However, it happens, you know, ends up being transgender and says, uh, "Can't do it. I'm a Republican." You know, they're, oh, they're yeah. yeah, they're not related at all. So it's almost. Absolutely. Strange now that you mention it that it's that there's even one um, you know one side of the political party that's you know geared towards I don't even know how to explain it, dude. Yeah, and and it's just cloaked in this idea of you know populist religious exactly uh, sort of con- nonsense. It's just it's just stupid, and I'm I'm personally tired of it. I I, I consider myself very. I try to stay as neutral and level-headed as I can, mm-hmm. and I talk to people on the left and the right, and I respect them. Uh, but this, to me, is not a political thing. This is like not left or right or anything. This is just well, like, it hey, should this, be. It should it be. It's people, been yeah, made it's, to it's kind been of, made to that. Yeah. And there's some educational well, aspects to it there too. Are, what, there are know? L. What is it? L. G. I don't even know the acronym. There's a sure. lot of letters, bro. It's, it's, yeah, it's lengthy. Yeah. yeah. L. G. L. B. G. L. G. LGTV. I don't even know the LGBTQ. anyway that group right let's just say they do you know they're activists they're they, they involve themselves in politics meaning so like it's not Some, I don't yeah. know to say to say it's it's has it's not political at all when the spokespeople for this group are very much involved in politics. And well, I think she, I think he was trying to say it should like in you personally. Mm-hmm. There's no political attachment to either, mm-hmm. you know, because regardless of what policies you want to vote for, people's personal uh, choices on how they want to live, yeah, want to live like sexually, like it has nothing to do with politics. Absolutely, you know? I mean, so, I can't. I think it really I can't has anything that. to do with anything. That's fair as that's well. That's true. That's absolutely yeah. true. But I think it's it's yeah. That's the big the the, the thing to me is at this point like. Oh boy! I know it's a totally different world in in Alabama. It's a different world in Gloucester than it is in on the east side of Providence. Whatever you know, but the, we've just got to get to a point. In my opinion, is like where well, that's like ancient history. I think there are yeah. going to be some people who they're like in their thirties, forties now in positions of, of decision decision making around this country. That when they're 80, 90 years old and they're reflecting, um, they're going to be embarrassed about some of the decisions that they made. In that arena today, and uh, and hopefully we can move past that. I think we can. I just well, you know. I, I think if we look, if we go back, you know, let's say fifty years and to today, if we travel that timeline. I think the country is forever becoming more and more liberal. Mm-hmm. Like it, that's the way it moves. It never goes the other way. Hmm. It's just a matter of the, t- oh, I don't the know. tempo what about the Georgia. Speed. Georgia's passing some interesting laws. They're kind of going the other way. Well, yeah, I'm right, saying right, as a right. country, maybe that state, maybe yeah. the smaller communities, uh, but I think the country mm. from day one has always moved to be more liberal. And I think which, it'll always... Which it should, though. You know, cause Think about the, the word liberal. You know, It's kind of like free. Well, should know? is very subjective. <laughs> I, I, th- I mean, can you? What, what is the actual definition of liberal? Should. <laughs> you know, or liberation. You know, Isn't that what the country is kind of built on? You know, liberation I from it, fucking rules that you don't definitely. agree with. Yeah, can, can we in agree, its simplest though, form, though, it would be uh, 
it's whatever is considered progressive. It's kind of, yeah, but like holding and progressive could be subjective any, too. Based on liberty and equal rights. And that's I think is ultimate. That's why I feel like when you know my left lean, right leaning friends, you know, bash the left leaning or vice versa, it's like. I probably have more right-leaning friends, you know, more Trump supporters, more people that are not as liberal. I wouldn't consider Jay a liberal or left-leaning, but I think when you just look at the definition of liberal and what it is, man, it's probably the right choice. Yeah, I think, and it can be subjective, but that's that's how I feel about it. To me, it's like you know, yeah. equal rights for everybody. That's the foundation. It can get you know, it can go to an extreme and really the the pendulum can swing way crazy where it's like, hey, not only are there equal rights, but my rights are now going to infringe upon your right to live your life the way you want it. And I don't think it should ever do that. Yeah. You know, I think your personal choices, I should, you should have the same rights as me. If I want a job and you want a job, you have the option. If I have a license, you can have a license. If I can vote, you can vote. But I don't think that my life should ever stop you from doing what you want to do and say what you want to say and vice versa. Well, yeah, let me, I think let that's me ask you this, now that you stated that. Uh, so how do you feel then? Let's, uh, I'm going to just dive right into this. How do you feel about affirmative action? How do you feel about laws and policies that favor a group? Uh, it's tough because if I'm giving you a black and white answer, I would say no, obviously that's not fair. In principle, it's yeah, not. Yeah, and right? on black and white. But based on you know the history and the ch- like, things that have happened, I can understand why there may need to be some flexibility on, on that. And it probably is necessary. Even at the sake of, let's say, you know, we have a constitution where we have laws and we have, again, again, we have policies and whatever you want to call them, uh, rules. Uh, yeah, but not everybody lives by the constitution. If, if we're doing things equally, right, is that not unequal? What? <laughs> <laughs> Where is my whole thing? Where's my whole thing? Imagine this. Imagine if we were imagine if we could get to a point where whatever route, affirmative action type policies, everybody wakes up one morning and and you know, it, the, the, you know, someone releases LSD into the uh, the atmosphere, whatever it is, and everyone wakes up and it's great again. Um, you know, if we imagine like you you guys mentioned your your, you know, 2A is is uh, your pro gun uh, or what? Or you, that's something to uh, yeah. I, oh, I yeah. think everyone okay. should have, yeah. have that right. So imagine if if we're past all this bullshit, you know, and so and guns are a major issue, no question about it. But imagine we could sit down at it and say, okay, here's you know, we're past all this stuff, we're past all of the name calling and everything. In let's work it out. What is what are the requirements for a blue card? Okay. Does that need to get modified? What are the requirements for a three D printer gun? All right, does what, that what, not happen? Well, not really. I don't think not at a fundamental level, and it gets so blown out of proportion where you have yellow shirts versus red shirts yeah. on that issue. That's why the state you have people on the left who will say, "Well, we can't allow people to have a machine gun in in Rhode Island." Well, you can't have a machine gun in Rhode Island. I mean, how you know that's not what an what an AR fifteen is. Right, right. Now, me personally, I I lean left on on guns. At the same time, I I grew up in the woods, and I am a I am a, a sympathizer to the two A community, and I understand where you're coming from. I don't think it's an evil issue uh, at all, but I think that there's a, a lot of, of of change that needs to take place in how we deal with weapons and how we deal with guns. I think another thing that gets overlooked when people talk about gun control, the inner city community who are then disproportionately disarmed against the police force. Now, look, I don't want to see... I, 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 what do you mean, violence, legal registered weapons? I'm talking about any weapon at all at that point. If you're looking at it from the, the, the full 37,000 foot view, now, this is not my personal perspective. Right, right, but right. one thing I know I hear a lot is that the commu- some communities feel like, well, gun control, that takes weapons away from us. It leaves the police armed, you know, right. and a very... That's where the big problem for me is. And, and you know, that's, that's an issue for some people. So I understand that those things need to be brought up. I don't think it should just be uh, an us on the left versus the no, right. With, and the misinformation doesn't help ground. at all. But imagine we could debate that. And we could have a conversation. Governor Mundo could bring in, whether it's your Frank Psychosian or whatever it is on the, on the right. Right. Linda Finn on the left. From, from Moms Demand Action, you know, a bunch of people who are neutral uh, from, from gun manufacturing, from, from the medical side of things, from the educational side of things, from mm. the police side of things, from the inner city 
uh, urban core communities from Gloucester and West Canaga and whatever else. Right. Everyone could get together and have that conversation. How can we as a state build a gun policy that makes everyone feel comfortable that their rights aren't being violated, but we're also taking steps towards a preventing accidents, right. preventing madmen and women from getting a whole weapons, whatever it may be, but also we're I not think it takes infringing. More communication. Yeah. All communication. And we're not able to have that communication because people are too busy worrying about whether or not somebody's Everybody, transgender well, going to a certain to, bathroom, trying to whatever win. it may be. You know, like when when you have these conversations with people sometimes, uh, most of the time I feel like when you disagree with somebody, like you and I, you just told us right now yeah. that you're against something that we feel strongly about. Yeah. You know, the, the well, I wouldn't, Second I wouldn't Amendment. say I'm against. I don't, I am not going to. I'm sorry, I would, not against. Yeah, I, would, I really can't. That was my, I, there are my things words, I'm firmly not against, Bill but, but, but not, you know, I, I, I'm not, but I lean, certainly lean right. heavily so you on lean left on that. Yep. But. Somehow we found a way to have that conversation yeah. without worrying about me winning or you winning. And, and right. a, a lot of times that's what these, um, you know, discussions will come down to. You know, if you have a, a, an opposing idea to mine, I no longer am even receptive of the information. I don't want to learn. I don't want to understand. I just want to win and play I gotcha. You know, I feel like sometimes, you know, conversations come to that and it's... Well, that's just that's ego a and pride and yeah, yeah. You know, has nothing so, to do with <clears throat> real resolution of yeah, any... it's not going to solve any problems. Yeah. I mean, right. people right Cause, now are... Because one thing we can... Sorry, I didn't mean to interrupt oh, no, you, but yeah. like you just said, a great term, it's not going to solve problems. And regardless of whether you want guns taken away, whether you want everybody to have Tommy guns, yep. whatever the case is, there's a problem. You know, right. that that's undeniable. Yeah, you know, right. there, there's mass shootings, whether it's one, whether they're, you know, white people shooting black people, vice versa, whether it's yeah. not racist. But, but, you know, I don't care. Hold I on, hold on. Let me, let me finish. Because it doesn't matter to me what, um, you know, why it's happening or who's doing it to who. There's still a problem there that can be solved. I, yeah, I think that absolutely. there are tons of problems and it's just, you know, a matter of what. And I hate to sound so cliche, but like no, it depends on what the media wants to sell. And I, that's like, that to me is, you know, more people could be dying from, let's say, I'm just going to use an arbitrary made up scenario. Let's say they're dying from, I don't know, fucking picking each other's ass, whatever it may be, just pick something. But it doesn't really necessarily sell on TV. So they, they, you know, mass shooting, that's, that's, that's yeah. huge. There might be more of an issue over here, but it's just not as interesting to a viewer. That's fair. But I'm you talking know, about something entirely different from that. You know, I'm talking about just going back to the, the problem solving mentality. Whether it is being pushed a specific well, way by the media. And I'm saying, and what if there's not really a problem? What if it's, what if there's more well, problems? Let me, let me tell you. That's what I, that's, where, problem, that's I where I say. draw the line. I don't yeah. think, what if there's, you know, to quote what you said, what if there's not really a problem? That's, to me, that's asinine because it's happened. If yeah. it's happened, then it, you know, I, that's all I need to see. If it's happened once, Twice, it's happened more than ten times well, that I can recall. To well, me, that's a problem. What well, I agree with you in a, in a, in a, in a nutshell, you know, you're like it's only one or two movie theaters. No, no, what I'm saying <laughs> is that what if it's not as big of a problem as these yeah, other problems? I'm, cool with that. That I'm saying relatively speaking, you're 100. Fair. Right. I, I, I think I get where you're coming from. I totally understand what your perspective, and I think that's valid. You know, but we could address those other problems if we could move past the specifics on this. And it's yeah, it's problem solving and. You know what? Communication. I, communication. I, I know that there, for example, right now, one of the things that's on the new package of gun laws is that is preventing 3D printing of fully operational weapons. I mean, that and, and the gun lobby is opposing that. That's absolutely ridiculous. That now, why you, should it be prevented? Well, because, Couldn't it be regulated and be safe? Absolutely. Well, I mean, right now, anybody, I mean, you have to have money, I suppose. To have a 3D but printer. You, you can then... But money, yeah. M money doesn't make you build, responsible. Though, absolutely. So. You're building an infrastructure for for, for guns that's yeah. totally unregulated. And to there's no... There's nothing yeah. there in place. Because then you would have to regulate zero. who can buy a 3D printer. Now, now that the 3D printing that companies too. probably don't want those regulations, so they're like... Almost certainly. Yeah. I mean, that's that's just not appropriate to me that that, that the gun lobby would, would say, hey, look, here's what we, we are specifically opposed to in this, this package. 3D printing weapons. What, but what, what the 3D printer will give you that because, you know what, you're right, and that's something that we can see some 17-year-old kid but now, who, how do printing you, it. Do you think that's fair, though, to gun manufacturing companies that may say hey you know this investment of a 3d printer for a 3d printer for us is the most you know uh, business beneficial for us you know it's the well, most profitable way if, to do it if somebody wants if somebody's a whatever i don't even know how it becomes a you become a licensed gun manufacturer but let's say you are and you want to use 3d printing to assemble that's fine i'm talking about people who are at home 
gotcha. downloading guns and you know you can print a gun out of a you can yeah, it's print so scary. that's absolutely ridiculous that, that and that currently is not regulated in Rhode Island so that's one thing that they're trying to pat it, you know it's in the package of this year's yeah. gun legislation and the gun lobby is opposed I mean that is I mean come on that is an area where you lose me for a moment I say mm-hmm. well, well how can how can you be serious that you wouldn't look at 3D printing for anybody, like any 11-year-old kid whose parents have a th- – they could print any kind of weapon that they get the plans for and the materials for. It's not free. You know, it's it's not like you, uh, you just print out, you know, Oregon Trail yeah, results. money is just subjective to ha- – you know, if they have it, they have it. It doesn't if matter. If you've got a 3D printer in your house, you probably have the materials. You probably are a kid who can yeah. do it. And I just think that, that, that we need to get more uh, – Specific on these types of things, it's it's just stupid that. Let, you let know. me ask you, where would you draw the line as far as what somebody can three D print? Then, I mean, if you regulate and say, you know what, you can't you can't print a gun, yep. then somebody else just you know playing devil's advocate would be like, well, what about a knife? Yeah, or then, or what about a a ball and chain with spikes on it, and or an axe, or a mm. wh- where do you stop? Where where you know. Not you specifically. I'm saying. Yeah, just, sure. You know. Well, I think there's always a black market for everything. No matter what you regulate, mm-hmm. weed. There's always going to be a better a black market. You get a better price. Whatever. You may not be able to regulate the quality on the black market, but you can. There's always that with the guns, and I think you'd have that with 3D printing too. I think the regulation is more on the design side, where someone says, "Hi, go to this website, and you can download a knife or gun that mm-hmm. you can print." And then the possession of the assembled or whatever, they figure that out. Again, I don't like the idea of like people going around knocking on the door of random citizens and, and saying, hi, we know you bought a 3D printer Can like print this up two me? years ago or we're inspecting to see if you actually printed a, you know, something offline. I think if you regulate that, you'd still have, you know, whatever, black web, dark web, whatever it is, ways to get in. I guess that's where I'm asking. Like, well, yeah. okay, so- so if we're going to stop people from, let's say, making guns, are we going to yep. are we going to stop them from making knives? Are we going to stop them from making whatever? I mean, how, right. how is this any ninja different? Thought? Yeah, ninja. Let's say from you know somebody being machinist yep. and they can they could literally make a gun out of metal. Yep. Right. So you, I mean, should we go to the machinist also and be like, hey, look, you can't do that with the plan I think the, the, again it would come down to I think the the, ta- the tax would have to be a tactic would be to regulate the, the dissemination of those plans and then the possession of like the assembled weapon in the same way that you'd have any other illegal firearm or, or knife that exceeds the blade limitations or whatever it is right you know that would be the only way to do it because you couldn't yeah you wouldn't you make a weapon out of anything, and that argument's right. used a lot of times yeah, by like, gun advocates. Well, you could always go back to ramming someone with a car or a chainsaw or whatever it is. Yeah, you have to use common sense at some point. Yeah, My thing I, is I that think that's a big factor in it, common sense, and we can sit here and try to dissect what common sense is or what it isn't. Right. But I just think that just is. those guys who are and girls who are opposed to that are so skeptical of the government. Uh, the uh, when it comes to the 3D printer, that shows me almost like a boogeyman mentality. And look, I'm not saying that, you know, everything is as it appears on the surface level, but when you go that far off the rails that you think not allowing the, the totally unmitigated printing of, th- of 3D printing of guns, uh, not putting that on, on the books and saying, hey, look, you know, that should be illegal. Even though you know if someone really wants it, they can probably figure it out. Um, I don't know that that's an infringement in your Second Amendment rights to, to do that. I just don't. I, I, How about an, an infringement on, a, on First Amendment, like the freedom of expression? Yep. Somebody who wants, it. Yep. Yeah. Somebody who wants to design weapons, or like you know, not they, they don't want to kill anybody. They just they like to design yep. their little Tony Stark. Or yeah, something yeah, like that. Yeah. You know, I'm just thinking. I'm yep. just trying to think of uh, you know. R.I.P. Iron Man. Oh. <laughs> Hope everybody saw Endgame. I didn't see that. <laughs> but um, uh, R.I.P. Iron Man. <laughs> <laughs> I mean, that would totally infringe on somebody's. Uh, expression yeah no or or is that like kind of taking the out of context I think context is everything because you could say Ted Kaczynski was just trying to express himself too when he when he became the Unabomber and mailed packages out you know so there always is that too Um, you know it's like I don't know it's just common sense you feel like everybody would know that that's one of those things you would hope whether like Mike Chippendale I never even thought about it you yeah, would like, hope that if he sat there with like some of these, like Brian New, Representative Brian Newberry, Representative Mike Chippendale, Representative Blake Flippy, these are all Republicans, two A guys, you know, farm 
you know, whatever. But also men of of great You're about minds. To go, totally go the stereotypical route. Work. Totally. But they're all uh, most two two of the two of the three are like redneck hillbilly KKK members. Totally. My cousin white guys, <laughs> oh, <man>. pretty much. <laughs> Gun toting <laughs> auntie know, mommy. But they're, they're actually they're they're, they're smart you. guys. You know, they're, they're, yeah. they're, they 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 and and two two are attorneys. Chip and Dale's like a, a musician and amongst other things. And you would think that with that pedigree, you'd be able to sit down and say, gentlemen. The 3D printer thing. Let's go. Let's get right. that. Strike that down. Get you'll agree to that. Let's revise this bill. Let's move. Let's get this well, let's circus get, like, out of here because we have some significantly relevant yeah. problems to deal yeah. with before the state collapses. People you know? have to realize too, man. That no, so, there's just going to be things that you feel strongly about. That there's got to be. You got to budge. You know, you nobody can really. If everybody's just going to hold their dig their heels in the sand. Nothing's going to get done. Forget it. You know, you have to give a little bit. I understand. I don't want it infringed upon. And, and I th- I think that, you know, at the end of the day, man, you have to be able to protect yourself. Nobody should tell you you can't protect yourself. If, it's just a matter if of what any, level. If any other human has the option to have something that can protect themselves or do damage against me and my family, you can't tell me I can't have that same option. You know, it, it's really like you're at that point taking away, what, taking away my right to, to life. You know, I, that's how I look well, at it. Well, how do you feel then? Again, like, so, okay, our government has tanks and fighter jets and... Bro, if I want to buy a fucking tank, like, <laughs> let me do my thing. Yeah, like, that's always the argument I use you know? as well against, you know, just be like the libertarians especially who will say, well, I'm suspicious that, they, you know, uh, this is for a militia type mentality. Uh, unless you have coordinated with other world powers mm-hmm. or you've secretly, you know, in the, the woodlands of Michigan, you've built some kind of compound where you've got tanks and RPGs and yeah. atomic weapons. Uh, there's no reason you might be able to battle your way out of a scenario and into the, the, the back country and survive off that yeah. for six months or whatever until the, the, the battle in your hometown has right. gone down. Right, right. Uh, but, but, you you're know, not, you're not, not going to take able, over yeah. the White House or you anything no like shot. that. This is abs- that, that's a bad position, too. But, but the, route, the day-to-day you know what position I look is at, fair. You, yep. what, what I think, you know, the, the way I look at it, and I... I Try to look at it worst case scenario. Like, yeah. all right, why do I need a gun? It's to protect, you know, the immediate threat of, you know, maybe somebody coming into my home or whatever the case is. But to me, what scares me, worst case scenario, is when you think back at something, you know, like, uh, you know, like the Holocaust. You know, these, most of these uh, Jewish people didn't have the ability to protect themselves. You know, or if I don't know, just to keep a, a lighter term, do you watch The Walking Dead by any chance? I don't. No. All right. So anybody? No. no. Any? Put it this way, if if a small government is trying to do, you know, create a genocide or enslave people, it's going to be a Tyranny. lot easier. For, yeah, you know, tyranny is going to be a lot easier to be followed through with if people can't defend themselves. No, I, I don't themselves. disagree with that, that 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 makes it easier. You know? I will say that the Nazi propaganda machine was in place at least six, seven years before they started to disarm the, the German uh, population. So more dangerous, but the forefront of that was just the, the, the notion that you should do what we say, whoever, you, you know, but, and you hmm. should follow the lead of that, of the Third Reich, that wave of, you know. So that was, they were, you know, you could say brainwashed sure. for many, many years before. Yeah. Now, what would you say to, because, you know, I've, I've spoken to people that almost feel like that could be something that's happening in this country now, you know, when you relate the, you know, um, Percentages of of African Americans or Black people that are arrested compared to whites, and then tie the gun laws in with, hey, you have a criminal record. If this is on your criminal record, then you can't get a gun. You know that could kind of be going down the same road of disarming a certain type of people, or is that a stretch? It's probably a stretch. I, I just think there's just an inherent massive injustice and in criminal justice system that's perpetuated itself in almost the entire history of the United States. It's now starting to turn around just a little bit. That's nothing to do with like we're gonna take over the population anymore. They already, in many ways, have had their boot on you know minority populations chin Who's for they? so the long. The government, like just yeah, p- just power. The day. I power. get it. Yeah, they. the the the, the royal day. The fucking day. We all <laughs> you know, know what, we all refer to it as they. I think it's great. Yeah. It's like you know who they are. They, man. They've had it. They've had it. They want us all. They didn't need. They don't need to disarm anybody. Like I said, they got tanks. They've got 20, 40 years ahead of us technology mm-hmm. right now that can probably melt our, you know, every molecule in At our body. At least 40 years. Know, scramble. Yeah, absolutely. And every, every fucking year that goes by, it's going to add another five years how, how far apart we are from where they are. Yeah. 
that's, in technology and weaponry and all that stuff. That's a lost yeah. cause at this point, for at least from my perspective. I don't see any, unless there's some scientists out there who's figured out a, you know, hey, if everyone has this weapon, you'll be able to counter attack a, you know, we'll yeah. have a nuclear standoff <laughs> for like, like three billion people versus the government. They're, f- they're forming their own weather patterns now, like shit. Who knows? I have you know? no idea, but I'm saying like that. I mean, that in, that in and of itself is could be used as a weapon. I mean, like... Oh, that'd probably be the ultimate hey, weapon, huh? Am I allowed to create tornadoes? Yeah. <laughs> like, yeah, the theory that Hurricane I'm Katrina is the hose like, right, yeah, yeah, you know, yeah. I mean, look, I think weather is, is possibly controllable. Maybe that's why we're having such dreadful weather from mm. a spring perspective here now. I don't know. But well, think about that. How can it not be controllable? If you could control the weather, think of how much money you could make on the, you know, everything, on the sneak everything. tip... <laughs> I mean, Everything. like you. People, That's how Channel Ten does it. RJ it's controls like the weather. Fear to the like. <laughs> yeah, dude. To the oh, extreme. Hey, well, our bread sales are down. Hey, call a blizzard in the north. Exactly. Yeah, yeah, we're fucking good, dude. One <laughs> <laughs> seventeen, please. Right, Everybody yeah. scratching each other's balls under the table, making fucking billions. What? What do you think happens at these meetings, dude? <laughs> <laughs> That's just so how it works. Who Who would you say is the? Um, uh, a lot of politicians come on your show. Yeah. Who's the uh, the biggest name that we might know? Because I I don't follow local politics too much. You might more than me. Senator Sheldon Whitehouse. You know, heard, yeah, definitely heard that name. Yeah. Uh, Congressman David Cicilline. You know, heard Congressman that name. G- uh, uh, Jim Jim Langevin. Nice. Uh, Alan Fung. Oh, he's a mayor, right? He's Cranston mayor. mayor. Yeah, he was a Republican. Didn't he run for governor? He did. He's, he's run twice now. Yeah. yeah. Republican uh, for governor from, as a Republican nominee. I thought he was, I mean, in my circle of friends, you know, and I'm talking about, you know, mainly social media, obviously you see a lot of people throwing their shit out there. Uh, it seems like the circle of people I know really supported him more than uh, Gina. So I'm, I'm Yeah, I think they were more vocal throughout the year, but at the end of the day, the Ramundo people i mean they just had an unbelievable uh communication strategy door to door they got they i think they knocked on like fifty thousand doors a day before Jesus election Christ. or the weekend before you know what i find kind of crazy she owned that, that. The, the, the we the people this happens every every single time a politician is running and and it's like we kind of fall for it all the time we're just like i mean i just like you know like the pandering it just works yeah, he's so nice. He's shaking my hand. He's doing this. He's doing that. Like, I never heard of you before you even started running. And when you're done, I'm probably never going to hear of you. I think but, the, uh, probably one of the, uh, I don't know, man. I, I don't know if you watched that. There's a documentary on Netflix called Bringing Down the House, maybe. Is that, you know what I'm talking about? Wasn't that like a black TV show with Queen Latifah? What? <laughs> what? <laughs> no, it's, oh. uh, it's called like Bringing Down the House. George, check it out, dude. Like, hey, Come on, man. What are you doing here? Help me out. Netflix bringing down the house. I think it was like a documentary on that young congresswoman um, out of the Bronx. Oh, oh yeah. Alexandria, Alexandria Ocasio-Cortez. Yeah, yeah sure. Yep. And it, it followed her campaign a lot. Yeah, and, yeah, yeah. And again, I, yep. I understand that documentaries are usually geared to, to have you agree knock with one way or the other. Knock down the house. I'm sorry for fucking that up. Knock down the house. Um, but it was interesting to me to see just how much grinding actually went into her getting her name out there because apparently she had to run against um, a Democrat that was, you know, people didn't even run against him anymore. You know? oh, he, yeah. was, he was kind of just a given. And but I'm I think it's a great man. leftist move, you know, to have her kind of represent... When you say leftist young, move, do you think she's it a minority. Would... kind of fits the whole left, you know, narrative kind of thing. No? Well, why? I, here's what I want to know. Why did she win? Kind Ultimately, like a Republican we can we can say, guy, but we can, we can. It's easy to say. All right, well, it's a you know it's a leftist move or it's an agenda. It's kind of pushing one way or the other. But ultimately, the people had to vote for her. You know, so that's right. Yeah, pe- she had to go. She was in these communities, and whether or not you know it's from the media, the you know the people met her and the people met her opponent, and they decided to vote for her. Yeah. So she's got to appeal to something and. You know, I don't live in the Bronx, you know, but after watching that documentary, and again, it could all just be pandering to certain things. I mean, she says a lot of shit that makes sense. You know, it, it seems like it's, I think naturally, people that aren't left leaning and are more right leaning are, you know, pre pre programmed to just hate whatever she says, you know. Um, pre programmed? Yeah, just, you know, like kind of personally belittle her intelligence or mistakes she may have fucking slip of the tongues whatever the case is because she's yeah. left you know so it's like all right i'm i'm supposed to disagree with her but i think when you 
you know, look at the way that she talks. She reminds me a lot of Trump when he was running and the, the whole appeal that he had to, you know, friends people. of mine and friends of ours. Yeah, yeah. The people just blue collar, you know, not unpolished blue, blue collar. Why am I calling Trump blue collar? Yeah, unpolished. But she rela- she relates a lot more to the working class. I think ultimately that's why she won. Yeah. And it, it seems like it's a genuine relation to the working class. You know, she's not afraid to get out there and act, you know, just be herself. You know, like she's she's I use the term fucking like she's a little hood when she has to be. I think, you know, it's, and I think, I think it's, it's all charade. But why? Why do you think that? <laughs> whatever it is, it's populism. You know, it's appealing to that base sense of, yeah. you know, whatever it is. What, you know, I don't know how to describe it left or right otherwise, but I think that's what both Trump and, and she play into a lot is, is emotions. I think it's crazy though, to like say that. that it's a charade. I mean, that, sir, are you saying that her, you know, her, her life is a lie? Because she really did grow up in these neighborhoods. And she really did work for these years, you know, as uh, a waitress and a bartender. You know, she really right. is Puerto Rican. You know, she really did the things that she said she did. So how can it be a charade if that's... Well, it's hard to to really define that line between charade and real life when you're a politician. Because a lot of... No matter what side you're on, you, you have to play to your audience. You have to play to the crowds, obviously, for votes and, and support. So, I mean, like... That's what I mean. I don't mean like she's a hundred and fifty percent just all fake, you know, like whatever. Like, no, I'm saying she's a politician. Uh, they all well, are. Every single one is. Well, no, not really. I don't. When you when you consider somebody like okay, let's say Donald Trump, he's, he's not more a of a politician than she is. He's a businessman. He's an unpolished person. That's. I think that's why he won because people can relate to him. Oh no way. I. I think he's if he came very, out he, he's he's not even close to as genuine as she is when she's talking to people that support her or don't support true. her. Okay. Uh, Absolutely. That's the know. biggest difference. Yeah, he's sure. he's much you more know. polished and he's I think he comes across as disingenuous to say that a lot. Trump is polished is <laughs> Yeah, maybe not maybe polished is the wrong word. More uh, he he's pandering more than she is. Uh, from from what it seems like to me. Yeah. You know, it seems like she's I don't know, man. She seem, it seems like she's just pretty real. And like I said, I don't, I'm not from the Bronx. I mean, you know, I, I'm, it's cool that she won. I didn't vote for her. I didn't not vote for her. It's probably not going to affect me too much. But if there was a politician locally that said and acted the way that I see her acting, I'd fucking vote for them all day. Like, if she was running here, I would have happily voted for her. There's the whole prog- there was a, a large progressive movement here, you know, that really won a lot of seats in the House. And yeah. Now and have I just, I'm the not reform really caucus, afraid of that you know? word progressive. I feel like, you know, I don't know, man. I didn't follow politics as much ever. You know, when Donald Trump started running, I thought, like, holy shit, this is pretty interesting. Like, what's going on right now? You know, Donald, fucking, you're fired. The Donald. That's going to be our president? Like, how's this happening? So I started really learning, you know, what progressive and, and uh, liberal and left and right and conservative. It never really, I just was living my life. You know, I didn't vote. Nothing was really, it didn't matter to me. So I'm learning more about it now. And at first, I was so anti-Hillary where I think I might have let that cloud my um, understanding of what left and right was because I was like, man, I'm, I'm right. Like, fuck this. I'm not going down this crazy road or extreme leftism is just not appealing to me. I'm going to stay right. But over the past, you know, probably year and a half, maybe two years, I've been a little... I just feel like my guard is down so much. You know, if somebody's lefty and they immediately, if I know they're, um, uh, you know, progressive... I don't shut them out, you know, in the same way if somebody's super right, you know, because, again, we talked about the definition of liberalism earlier. I think it's it's a good foundation to have, you know, so I'm a little more receptive to that shit. Rant over. <laughs> All right. <laughs> yeah, I think progressives and conservatives have a lot in common. They overlap in a lot of ideas, like true fundamental conservative libertarian type approach to the world. A lot of those uh, policy or end results are probably the same thing. It's just that way the you get there. The method of how you get there. Yeah. And that's which the is, debate, which, is, which you know, we're, again, like we're if we could just here. say, hey, wait a minute, you know, do we need K through through uh, K through K college or pre-K through, through college mm-hmm. public education? Is that the best solution? Is there some other way to look at that? You know, meeting on those issues right. rather than the broad issues. I, I think there's a lot more in common. And I think that's why you're seeing in Rhode Island, you see this this wave of progressive candidates, although they were defeated just a few hours ago, ultimately on their on the the Reproductive Health Care Act, which failed in the Senate committee. What was that? Can you detail that a little bit? Sure. So basically, that's the abortion protection 
Uh, it made it through the House. The con- I'm sorry, the, 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 it did made it, made it through the House. The conservative, Democrat controlled. Rhode Island has a lot of Democrats, or basically would be Republicans in any mm-hmm. other state. Nick Mattiel, the Speaker of the House, would is one of them. Nonetheless, the the 71 percent of Rhode Islanders want to codify Roe versus Wade here in Rhode Island, which it's not. Um, basically, in case the Supreme Court under President Trump under this, as if that is overturned, it would still be protected here in Rhode Island. As of right now, and Rhode Island voted no against that. Rhode Island voted that. Well, there was no vote. It's decided it by by law in 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 the state house. But we voted for as a state candidates to make that happen. Right. Basically, one of them backed out. So just to break it down, Barney yep. style. So I I yep. understand, and some of our listeners do. Yep. If the Supreme Court overturns the Roe v. Wade, that's right. In Rhode Island. We follow that. We're going to follow that Supreme Court ruling. That's correct. As, and, of, as okay. of just a few hours ago, that will stay the case for at least another year gotcha. until next legislative session. So the progressive hmm. movement only has so much teeth. They've shown other moments of, you know, in, yeah. in a challenge to party leadership by Representative Moira Jane Walsh. They the progressives fell way short of trying to take on the institutionalist Democrats here in Rhode Island. So it's not like it's. Really, hmm. you know, tomorrow we're going to wake up and everyone's going to have a free car in their their garage, <laughs> okay. you know. But but it's uh, it's gaining some momentum and it's appealing, I think, to a lot more voters than than it, people who didn't even realize they were progressive. And I think the Republican Party is putting forth candidates who sim- are able to work with progressives, uh, the successful ones anyway, particularly House Minority Leader Blake Filippi, who you know, pro cannabis, you know, Hollow. he sponsored the. Uh, the DACA legislation here, you know what I mean? Driver's licenses, he's, he's pro, you know, certainly pro-immigrant, but very s- strong 2A positions, you know? Mm-hmm. He has a farm in North Smithfield. He has c- certain v- views. So you're seeing a lot of, like, the progressive ideas, if you will, quote-unquote, creeping in right. to the mainstream, quote-unquote, po- the- and that's where it's going to make a difference in the long term. And it's hopefully it'll become less of the, uh, that person's... That's what progressive, <laughs> and, you know. Yeah, that's what maniac. I mean. Now, You're going to try to take all my guns and money and give it out to, you know, Lee whatever. Lee and Lee some Lee. someone who, yeah, you know, uh, is, in my mind, uh, un- undeserving of that. Whatever it is, and 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 at the same time, on the left, it's <laughs> it's not just that everybody who's on the right side of the spectrum is uh, is a total maniac either. I mean, it's a two way yeah, street. That's not, for sure. You're not a Nazi. If yeah. You're just a little right leaning. Do you think that there are any? Uh, a- any um, outside the the norm candidates for president that might have a shot, you know, in twenty twenty, or do you expect Trump and you know, Biden or? Well, uh, well, that's interesting. I do think I'll probably any be underdogs. That. Yeah, no. Well, there's so many people on the Democrat. I don't think anybody's going to mount a successful a lot of challenge on the Republican side. I mean, we see Bill Weld right now. I mean, that's mostly. I don't think that's going to have any any yeah, momentum. Trump's going to be the Repu- Republican. There's almost no, you know, we, there was some uh, uh, the the, uh, the the former uh, South Chrissy Chris uh, Haley. Um, she when she when she was she resigned as United Nations ambassador. There was some thought that she may take on Trump in a primary. That hasn't been announced, but who knows? Um, an independent seem- could be appealing. I don't know who that would be. Michael Bloomberg. Nah, I think there's still a chance that someone could come out of nowhere that no one's ever heard of before. Like we see with Andrew Yang rising in the Democratic Party right now, no one heard of him as of November. All of a sudden, his name's out there. Andrew Yang, yep. Uh, yeah. Yo, he's he's probably got my vote for now, dude. Thousand bucks a month, you know. Dude, absolutely. first of all, and it's funny because when you first hear that, your natural reaction is like, nah, yeah, just, right, yeah, right, yeah. promising money. Where's it gonna come from? But he's like hits you with all these FAQs, man. He's answers where it's going to come from, how it's going to affect the economy, how it's not really costing us, you know, taxpayers anything. Like, dude, he's, yeah, he's got some good ideas he's for old. sure. Where, where, which way does he lean? Uh, Fucking perfect, dude. That's the way he leans. Yeah. Well, sorry, this is now. I'm just giving my political opinion. <laughs> Fucking, he's pretty left, you know. Oh, in general, but at the same time, it's all relative. There may not even be a left right spectrum but yeah, but anymore. It's such a you know, it's just like doing so, right. Such a reasonable. Let me, let me ask you a question. Yeah. Are there any? Is there anything? Uh, you're kind of a. Would, would you say that you're uh, kind of a poster child for the left here in Rhode Island? Like no, uh, <laughs> no poster no. child. For well, the I don't left. know what else yeah, we're like, uh, a spokesperson at least. Mm-hmm. No, no, not even close. No, man, right, he's uh, just fucking here chilling. You'd say yeah. he's left leaning. I mean, I, right. I, 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 they, <laughs> I, I mean, I could. I probably can. Sp- I think they would. If if I was going to speak on someone's behalf, I'd be way more likely to speak on the left's behalf than yeah. on the right's behalf. But I don't think you know. I don't see myself as. 
as that person. I think the the poster child for the left right now would be someone like Providence Mayor Jorge Alorza. Um, oh, yeah, you know, okay, the, right. I think I, he's I a good you, example. Actually. actually, Congressman David Cicilline yeah. is probably the Rhode Island. Like that's when you think about when you think of the left, the left in Rhode Island. Where how far has it gone? How really how far has it gone? Do you personally you know? agree with any uh, any of Trump's achievements? Um, well, you know, I, he's like, please give me, yeah, you know, I, I, yeah, you know, (laughs) sure, (laughs) sure. I mean, I, we've seen the resolution of some, uh, economic, uh, it sounds like it's really hard for you to say. (laughs) Yeah. I mean, I'm, I'm just satisfied. Look, I mean, it's not even right. You know, I'm, I, I, the, the, the nature of the campaign, uh, I guess the, 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 now we're seeing cringe, like. Just well, it doesn't like make me cringe. Uh, no, no. I think what makes me cringe is people who support him with no idea blindly. of Just blindly. what they're yeah. talking about yeah. and, and use Make America Great Again at the same time as, you know, try to equate that with the office of the president or anything like that. It's almost like two different things to me in the sense that, you know, MAGA has gotten so far off the rails in my mind that it's I, I'm surprised the president. Well, that was just know, genius, like. Market marketing. handering, marketing, branding, like, dude, that yeah, make America great again is the fucking. Isn't that's part of being, I guess. That's it, like it that's works bigger than Nike's. Yeah. Just you know, do it. Like, they, it worked. Yeah, they were waiting. They the, the, that movement, the 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 partnership between the evangelical movement, the military industrial complex, and you know, to a certain extent, in inner belly of Washington, D.C., the, the, the kind of the right-wing portion of that. Right. Um, and, and the media, the, 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 the Hearst, you know, the, the, the Rupert Murdoch's, that conglomeration, that, that peer group, if you will, that, or partnership that was forged in It was like Voltron. Or really early <laughs> the, in the 70s. That's you know, the they, they we were talking about that's earlier. That, they, they've been waiting for Trump forever. Yeah. You know, they, that's their guy. And so when they, when they had the moment... They used it. They executed the deal, and now he's in there. That's 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 one thing. What, what I'm not surprised. First of all, that when Trump won, I wasn't surprised at all. I grew up in Cherahoe. Yeah. Um, you know, two of the two of the towns in Cherahoe are the gun sanctuary towns. Now I've seen a lot of the practical side of Trump, but I've also seen a lot of the negative um, connotation that comes with xenophobia and these types of things that I've seen them played out my whole life. So I wasn't surprised. I know they exist. I know they tend to exist, uh, you know, in more rural areas for some reason. And those, he had a huge role. Those rural words are hilarious to me, like xenophobia, yeah. homophobia. Because when you hear phobia, it's like you're afraid of something. It's like, what, dude? Like, yeah, and I think that do plays you, like, into this stuff. you, like, gay people that scared you? Like, why are you homophobic? Why are you afraid of gay people? So it's, I've it's never almost, met anybody that was truly homophobic. Because I think the word just doesn't make sense for what it is. You, you, you like, you're just a fucking hater. You know, like you're just. It's yeah, like exactly. You're right. just. It's Have like you a, met anybody like that though? That's that's afraid of gay people. They're like, like oh, no, legitimately, literally. No, that's why I don't, I don't. That's why I'm saying it's a silly word to use. It doesn't make sense. Yeah. I think it's kind of big. It probably stretch. makes more sense. Yeah, I think so, and that's the part of that that comes out of. Uh, they came out of this whole thing that's frightening to me, you know, that, that people are still behind that, that people think that that's a great thing. Like, again, the we've He's seen the economic challenges, <laughs> <laughs> the economic <laughs> challenges of, you know, we see now the tariffs and everything. Um, there were some positive things that happened in terms of corporate tax cuts. I do think that as much as I loathe most elements of Larry Kudlow as economic advisor, there's some intelligent base to the idea that corporate tax cuts can stimulate the economy. I don't know if they have, but I think that's something that I Trump has ever worked. Well, it's worked in it? in it, when when the G, when the GDP exceeds 3.0%, it's working. We've seen that in in post World War II and post Kennedy. Um, you know, so it's been a Democrat and Republican maneuvering. I think yeah. that, you know, their idea of like we're going to cut corporate taxes and we're going to get things moving, but now I think corporations have just have that that idea being in there in the discussion. Uh, that's something that doesn't totally offend me. It's a somewhat fiscally conservative, you know, almost a like Keynesian economics way of thinking things. But it's not even what I'd like. That, it's not worth it to me. Mm. I got a little bit more money this year in my tax return. Yeah, as a musician, I get more money in residuals. Trump did sign the Music Modernization Act. 
but I would rather have. What happened with that? What's that about? Well, it was basically just he signed a policy that the streaming revenue that you get as a musician is slightly increased. You know, yeah. um, dude, that's. You know, I, I'm not. I don't know about the music industry, but I heard Steven Tyler on Joe Rogan just kind of explaining the ins and outs, especially yeah. you know back in the the 80s and shit. That's that was a corrupt industry, and maybe it still oh, is. You know, of course, these, it's like these guys, beauty like Steven Tyler, yeah. wrestling, you know, circus, whatever yeah, it is. Please, please. It's whatever that's, that's Thank just you full of me. corruption. I mean, that's that's the nature of the beast. But but just just quickly go back to Trump. America. I would give back the music, the money I made in my Trump in my, in my Trump return, my tax return. The more the money I make off of residuals, I'd give that back to have somebody else in office that was not conducting things the way that he is. I think it's an embarrassment on a regular basis. The the, the rhetoric, and I think we're seeing policies that are just going to get turned around anyway. Even if you had a Republican in there in. in Eight years, I think, I, I think things are going to like you move his, move out of that department very quickly. His uh, his unfiltered approach and the you know when he speaks and when he tweets is just whether or not he's doing something good with his policies. It, it just that's gonna um, what's the word I'm looking for? Like oh, it's gonna that's gonna be what people remember. Yeah. You know, from his presidency, right. unfortunately, like it's own. Even though you know, I, I voted for him, and uh, you know, I, I, I He's feel like probably one of the best presidents. Well, I feel like you know his. I feel like oh, his, you yeah. know his his <laughs> pandering. Think- you know, it, it worked on me. You know, like I, I bought into it. I was like, yeah, fuck it, dude. Like he's he's not a politician. He's against yeah. the grain. He's the guy. You know, he's our savior. And yeah. I I did. You know, like I. So I'm like, all right, fuck it. Trump's our guy. But I still, I, I think looking back at 20 years, man, like from now, it's going to be like, man, what a fucking joke we had for eight years, yeah. dude. Like we voted in a celebrity who just fucking appealed to a really weird part of us. I don't that's, know. That's really, yeah. I think, very shallow. <laughs> I don't like think on, shallow. It's like on the surface. I, I think people will look back in 20, 30, 40, 150 years, whatever it is. I think they'll remember Charlottesville. I think we'll remember that day, you know. Yeah, and I think unfortunately. That, that's the stuff that people stick out, and that'll be the flame in history of like this. This I don't think it's it's yeah. fair to compare it to you know the the Holocaust or, or the 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 slaughters that we see in, in in West Africa or anything like that, you know. But I think that it's it's totally fair to say that it's a dark time right now, and we're just seeing uh, for who for anybody who really believes in the fundamental reason why this country was started, you know, to break free well, I mean, from... It's, it's, I th- I'd say that'd be a stretch. It's hard to say when you know, like, let's say black unemployment's down, female unemployment's down. I mean, are those just like... Hey, thanks. Do you want another coke? Are those just really like oh, actually, yeah, political... Uh, oh, thank you very much. Oh, are you looking at that? Little drink break, Are those boys? stats bullshit? Is that, I guess that's what I'm asking. I don't really know. Um, yeah. Before you answer that, let's give a quick yeah. sponsor to our, a thank you to our sponsor, Legends. That's where the drinks came from. All right. Time Legends in. Legends Pub and Grub, 1458 Park <laughs> Avenue, Cranston, Rhode Island. With Chrissy. With Chrissy. With Chrissy. Right. Thank with Chrissy. you, Chrissy. I don't know. Uh, yeah, the stats mean nothing. People are driving lifts. People are selling drugs. People are dropping their kids off at daycare that costs more than they're making in a single day. I mean, things are messed up. I mean, there's no question about it. From a yeah, there's some neighborhoods are that look great. Better? Definitely not. No. Definitely not. No way. They're getting worse. I the value feel, of the I dollar feel like we're, is we're, we're asking like, are they getting better? Or you know, things are. Ha- it's such a. It's so skewed, you know, and it's. It's really a perspective thing. For yeah. some people, I'm sure the world, you know, the country is better than it was eight years ago, five years ago. For some people, it's a lot worse. I mean, how, what's the, the overall rating of how the company's doing? I mean, the company, the country. You know, there's not really one way to say it's better or it's worse. Right. You know? Well, our global, like, military stance, uh, you know, you're... Yeah, but to, some, peop- to some people, that's not better. Like, yeah, our, our I, mili- I, I would... People, no, 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 I'm not saying it's better or worse. I'm just saying, if you're asking, well, how do we get the pulse? Well, it's those things, I guess, you know. How other people, other yeah. countries uh, react to us and or respect or disrespect us yeah. as and a country, as a whole, as a society. And that goes back way before Trump, too. I mean, that goes back yeah, a absolutely. long time when we've been in fighting these two wars now that are, mm. you know, really potentially uh, not. There's no real way. Thanks, Andy. That there's there's no real end in sight. I mean, they'll, they'll tell you that Al, Al-Qaeda has been driven out of Afghanistan at the same time as we have... Now we have proof that there's they've almost come back and 
in their entirety in terms of the relationship and yeah. the partnership with the Taliban there. I mean, it's, it's almost well, that would point. never stop. It, exactly. It's so we're fighting like they, these endless wars, Orwellian wars that, you know, and, and that create, goes even we can go all the way back to us as the, as this world power. I mean, that's a negative yeah. perception around the world when you think about the general st- status of the United States from from the perspective of a lot of other places. Let me ask you: you, know? do, you do you yourself do you believe it's a necessity? Uh, meaning, like, let's say, a national. Obviously, not, you believe yeah. national security sure. is, yeah. is important. I definitely. Do. Um, nah. But I always say this: <laughs> you know, if America is not on top, do we realize that somebody else will be? And if we're if if somebody else is on top, well then we're going to be in a world of hurt. We could be, yeah. Maybe. Oh no, we will be. <laughs> well, we could be. I mean, I mean, like Canada's it's, not it's, on top. They're not in a world of hurt. Like we're not exactly, just fucking right. They fucking are them up compared to let's say a superpower like like us. You know what yeah, I'm but saying? What, we're not fucking with Canada. Yeah, well, no. What I'm saying is that if you're not a, if you're not a, if you're not the king of the mountain, well, yeah, that, that just we, means that you're we, another we, player we, and somebody else. We, number one in the world. Besides military, obesity. Yeah, and soon not to be. China's <laughs> about to survive. I think they may are obesity, heart disease, China, right? absolutely. <laughs> yeah. well, education. Well, we're way down. Is this a, is the heart of everybody's economy? America's economy. I think, uh, uh, oh man, China. dude. Well, no, I'm saying right now our economy is the is 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 the global economy. If if we go down, everybody goes down. What? Yeah, is that true? That's absolutely. George, give me a quick true. stat check on that. Is it true? If we go down, do they go down? I just Googled that shit. <laughs> any country that goes down the same as China, that would be a global... Right. Not China. any no. country. I can name some countries no, that... No, but if China... Specifically, yeah, like, if China went down... The, it would the be Philippines. If the Philippines went down... Nah, the <laughs> Philippines have those um, those sea leeches, dude, that are like fucking erection what? stimulators. What the fuck are you talking about? I, th- I watched this thing called Street Food on Netflix recently, man. It was cool. I told him about it. He's from the Philippines. Really? Well, he's no. Filipino. I have his Filipino. mom was like born <laughs> on one of the rocks over there. Yeah. <laughs> That's a Do you follow uh, NBA at all? Yeah, sure. You like the Warriors? Yeah, I'm Where growing tired from? a little bit. You, you know, know who Steph like, Curry is? I, I was into that. I got a very but... specific question to ask you. Let's hear it. All right. You know who Steph Curry is? Of course, yeah. You see his wife in the news lately? She no. Nah. nah, that's wild, man. So Steph Curry, first of all, he's the fucking poster boy for what... If, you, if you're a woman and you yep. say, man, this is how I want my husband to be and act, he's the guy. He's you a know gentleman. What I mean? he's, he's a gentleman. Yep. He's his dad chivalry, too, he's he respects funny. his... Yep. Dude, He, I remember Smart. there was a story of a little girl writing a letter to him saying, hey, Steph, you know, I know that you have daughters and I don't think it's very you know, fair that your shoes don't come out in girl sizes, blah, blah, you know, whatever. Yeah, and he, he wrote back to her and he said, you know what, you're right. What kind of father am I if I'm teaching my daughter that they can do whatever they want and we should have girl sizes, so here you go. And he had his team design a new shoe, now they come out in girl sizes. You know, and he's just always nothing but, um, you his know. His wife's busted? His No, no, dude. I, what? His wife's a fucking fox for you. Oh, um so, but, you know, so, and he's just the same with, it, with his wife, the way he respects her, never had any scandals with other women, but his wife recently, Aisha Curry, came out and said that, I mean, to, to make it short, that she wishes she would get attention, you know, from other men that find her attractive, you know, she said that. You know, mm-hmm. she's like, man, he's always fighting off women with stick, and it would be nice, you know, with, with a stick, it'd be nice if I got some attention from other men, too. <laughs> the fucking it's internet is like, okay, what? Like, <laughs> and it's funny to see two two sides to that because there's a lot of women supporting her, you know, saying, well, she was just being honest in how she feels, and yeah, she, you know, it's feelings, okay for yeah. her to want attention. Where the but fuck then did that come from? There's a lot of men, you know, or, or even just <laughs> men and women on the other side that are just like, well, like you have everything you want. Like, why is it? Why do you need attention from other people? You know, yeah, basically calling her out and saying. You know she's gonna cheat on him now. I don't know. It it got fucking weird. Yeah. But I thought, you know, I thought it's interesting. It's been in the news lately. Who the fuck knows? I think people are, you know, they're entitled to have those. Well, what do you think? I mean, what, feelings, what, if, what, if, you know? what if your girl came up to you and said, "Damn, you know, like I really wish more guys would check check me out." I'd be like, I don't know. You're fucking get prettier then. I don't fucking know. What the fuck? <laughs> Leave me Maybe alone. That's what he said. That's a joke. I, people are definitely, you know, my my wife's. Super hot and beautiful, Agreed. smart. No, I'm kidding. Yeah. <laughs> Some, you know, and intelligent. You know, so people are always into her wear, and that's I don't I don't have a problem with that. You know, what I mean, it's like that's that's good. I don't think that's yeah, a bad thing at all. Not, that's, I mean, that's, that's legit. That makes you know, me people feel are good. Always like, wow, she's playing bass on stage. Look, like, these guys. Like, that's right. She's your bass player. You know? That's fucking crazy, man. I'm that her guitar player. Is more like it. You know, at this point, you know, she's she's the boss of the band. Slap at, this at the point. bass. <laughs> 
But, but I, you know I what I mean? Was, like, I don't think it matters at all. Who cares? Like, those are yeah. traditional ideas. I don't, I'm not a polygamy guy or, or anything like that. Um, but I think that if someone wants to be, fine. I'm, you know, it's just not my thing, you know? I think we all want to be. It's I think, I think everyone naturally probably has that. Yeah. Cool. Well, because think about in. it. When you're, I, I think it's built in because when you're, practicing monogamy or when you're in a relationship where you're only you know fucking one person ultimately you have to have some discipline you go against urges you know like i think that that our bodies just have you know you yeah. those are medical they, terms they, well th- think about you know it's like think, think about uh, if you dictionary <laughs> he sounds so intelligent so he said when well, you're only fucking one person <laughs> <laughs> listen i never claim to, to to be intelligent i try not to sound too intelligent yeah. but i don't know it, it just seems like when you're beating animalistically, you know, in your DNA, you're just fucking like we're we're pretty sexual, right? You know, we're pretty sexual, and you Definitely. make a commitment to somebody, and you decide, hey, I'm only gonna have sex with you because we're in a relationship, not because that's what your you know body necessarily wants to do all the time. If that was the case, it wouldn't be porn. I think that's true. I think there's, it's really fair, and it's probably healthy to acknowledge that at minimum. You know what mm. I mean? And there's something like wrong with. With, with with feeling that way, I so I just my personal way, having a exactly, gang yeah, exactly. All of a sudden, that blows up in your face, though. She's you like, know? honey, I'm just it's in my DNA. It's in my, it's, it's, it's it's part of the plan. Uh, I think it's <laughs> probably like their DNA is in you. Yeah. Yeah. Oh yeah. Jesus Christ, <laughs> on you. Jesus. Um, anything else you wanted to add, Bill? Cool podcast, fun in here. Yeah, you guys, thanks. Dartboard going next time. Yeah, yeah, for going. sure. There's uh, um, one dart you can have yeah, that. Exactly. <laughs> um, but, yeah. Before before we go, I just yeah. wanted to uh, how how can everybody find you? Uh, BartholomewTown.com or whatever <laughs> app you know you listen to podcasts on. Wherever li- you're listening to this right now, just search for Bartholomew Town. Yeah. I'm on Instagram at Bartholomew Town Podcast, and you can search Bill Bartholomew Twitter or whatever else to find me there. Music, oh, yeah. Silver Teeth, we're on Spotify, whatever. That's the name of the band, oh, Silver, wait, Silver Teeth. Can I just say band. one yeah. thing? Nah, you're, so done. You, you're done. You sound like Ben Shapiro. Really? Have you ever heard that? No, that's shocking. So I'm like his counterpoint, like, then. I'm like the butterfly effect no, of Ben if, Shapiro. If you weren't sitting in front <laughs> really? of me and I was hearing you, I, I could, like, man, you guys sound alike, but obviously. No, I don't, I actually don't know. He's the guy who's kind of been at the center of, like, the free speech on college campuses stuff. Yes, Is that yes, the guy? yes, yes, yes. He's right. way, way, you know, extreme right. Yeah. But okay. I'm saying, you know, I'm saying, like, the sound of your voice, not necessarily what you're that's talking interesting. about. It just sounds like Ben Shapiro. But anyway, cool. go ahead. I'm sorry. <laughs> Josh has no idea who Ben Shapiro is. No, no. I know who Ben Shapiro is. I just think <laughs> you said go on. He's the right man in Judah. Uh, you interrupted his plug. Now he's gonna plug all over again. No, yeah. we. Heard so what's the name yeah. of the podcast? Bartholomew. Yeah, I guess we're All right, no doubt. Well, yep. All right, cool, man. Thanks for coming. Thanks for coming out, Bill. A lot of fun. Good work. Legends Pub and Grub. Bye. All right, everybody. Thanks for listening. And before we go, just gonna <laughs> what, 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 dude? Over? yeah, just gonna <laughs> just gonna go ahead and give a quick thank you to our sponsors, man. First and foremost, thanks to Division Street Auto, five ninety five Division Street in Pawtucket. Go check them out. You know, you get that little discount. Onlyville Tire. Go see Dory. She's in Onlyville, Providence. Um, you know, they've been in business over a hundred years. Used tires, new tires, whatever. Donkey Dodgers Poker. Check them out on Facebook at Donkey Dodgers Poker. Hi, Paul. Um, yeah, every night of the week there's somebody somewhere else. Tops Electrical Supply. Uh, whether it's in, uh, they specialize in lighting. So whether it's LED, fluorescent, um, whatever it is you need, go check them out as well. JW and Sun Constructions. Uh, they specialize Johnny in Webb. <laughs> kitchens, baths, interior. Finish flooring, siding, deck, whatever you need, man. Fucking ground up with the, you know, the house. You want a house? Go, go see J and W Construction, Legends Pub and Grub, where we're at now. Five, I believe it's fourteen fifty eight, fourteen fifty eight Park Ave. Uh, come down and get some egg rolls. Go see Ricky. Go see Chrissy at the bar. And last but not least, Aunt the Barber. Uh, psh, check them out right at the Atomic Salon on Atwood Avenue, Johnson. Always keeping me crisp. Or you can give them a call at four zero one five eight zero six. Eight five one. I lied. It's six six five one. <laughs> six six five one. Four zero one five eight zero six six five one. Call them up. Get cleaned up. Love you guys. Bye bye.